Hello everybody, Stephen Housen here with the Youth Review for MUFC Latest. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since I uh, last spoke to you about the youth and the press have absolutely annihilated our academy. They're talking about the lack of director, which I guess is a little bit of an issue. They're talking about the under-18s results like it matters and they're completely ignoring that the under-21s are dominating with what's largely an under-18s side. So we'll cover the first few uh, results that we've had recently. Monday night saw the under-21s suffer their only their second defeat of the season in the league against uh, Everton. They went down 2-0. This was at Finch Farm. It was behind closed doors. They moved it last minute, so I have no idea what happened. Uh, it wasn't on TV anywhere, so I can't give you any ideas of what went on or what's going on with all those. But we do look good to retain the title. Uh, that we won last season. We're only four points off leader Sunderland and we do have three games in hand. So while the sky's falling for the under 18s, nobody's mentioning that the under 21s are absolutely smoking it with an extremely young side and a young side that's also been depleted by first team call ups. Um, one player that's really standing out for me at the moment in the under 21s, uh, as much as Timothy Fosu Mensah is really banging on the door now for first team action, is, um, is Roshan Williams. Uh, and that's that's largely down to his just ultra composed performances, both in the under 18s and the 21s when he's been used. His uh, his pace is ridiculous. He broke Darren Campbell's record in the Greater Manchester um, schools for sprinting. Um, I think it stood for 25 years when Darren Campbell set that. He is he, clearly a quick lad. Can you see anyone being a faster striker than him? So that enables him to have a confidence in his own play so he can step out a little bit and really start to do stuff with the ball. He's comfortable with the ball at his feet. He's intelligent. He's defending. He's absolutely fantastic. He's a real cerebral defender, just at ease keeping track of people. He's physical, he's fast, and he's definitely one for the future. He's also eligible to play at under-18s level next season as well. So this is a real one for the future. I think he's a way off the first team due to his age, but his physique, his uh, his skill level, he's not far off. Uh, I think he'd probably do best to stick around for a little bit and then maybe look to maybe get a, a short local six-month loan, maybe middle or back end of next season. I think that'd be really good for him. Uh, so to move on to the under-18s. A lot has been written about the under-18s. We are right at the bottom of the league. We are losing game after game after game. Uh, but what people are forgetting is, like I said earlier, a lot of the under-18s, and certainly the better players of the under-18s, have been moved into the under-21 side. We're playing a largely under-16 side in the under-18s. And this is Premier League Academy. You are talking about some serious footballers here playing for all these other clubs. But what you have to remember is that the academy is not there to win stuff, is it? It's nice if they win stuff and it's a good recognition of the achievements that the lads have put together. But in reality, how many academy players make it through to the first team? Manchester United are the leaders in this in terms of number of academy players that make it through to the first team and play top five flight Premier League football and also how many appearances that they make once they get there. So United are cruising in terms of player development that nobody seems to think about. So... If you could, it all, so, but a lot of these other clubs don't have four or five academy players that are representing them in the Premier League, um, whether they're still at the same club or they're now playing for other clubs. Manchester United have got dozens uh, playing top flight professional football after coming through Manchester United Academy. But a successful academy would to be produced one player a season. Now, if you geared up an under 18s and an under 21 side just to bring through one player a season. Let's say it was Yanazai for us this year or last year. Let's say it's Pereira for us. Let's say next year it's Fosu Mensah. If you can bring through one player here, that's considered a, a, considered a success. Get me teeth in. Um, so why are people getting all giddy that the under-18s as a team aren't doing that great? Because the team doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. It's nice if you have a team come through, similar to what happened with the Class of 92 lads, but in the grand scheme of things... One or two players coming through a year is a phenomenal success. So as long as Manchester United are concentrating on bringing in one or two players and we allow the rest to move on like Liam Grimshaw and Ben Pearson have just gone and done where they've gone to Preston, then that's a successful academy. And nobody in England is as, as, is as successful as Manchester United at bringing through an academy. Let's illustrate the point. Everybody knows the Class of 92 won the FA Youth Cup. That was their crowning achievement in 1992. And six of them went on to stay in the first team and win the Champions League. What happened to the rest of them? Well, Robbie Savage ended up playing uh, half a dozen different clubs, um, Ben Thornley and others, basically dropped down the divisions and retired a lot earlier than they should have. 
So was that considered a success because we had those players come through? We didn't have a full team come through, did we? No, because you don't need a full team to come through for a, a successful academy. But what I will also say to you is, how did the Class of 92 do in the league? Do you know? You have no idea, do you? Because it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter how the Class of 92 did in the league. The under-18s and the under-21s, as it is now, back then it was the B team, the A team, the reserves, and it was a mixture of open age, and that was Central League and the Lancashire League, and they would play whatever they needed to play. It doesn't matter if you're winning those leagues. What it's about is player development, and Manchester United do that better than anybody out there. Uh, what else did I want to move on to? So, Oh, yeah, so th- this isn't being reported in the press. Manchester United under-16s won a tournament the other day. Nobody cares. Okay, right. Doesn't matter, does it? Because it's just about bringing through and developing players. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, there's also several other of um, our age groups have been successful down in the underages, beating all these teams that supposedly got better academies than us, including City. Uh, we've also secured some serious talent for our under-18s for next season. Two um, under-16 capt- uh, national captains. I can't say who they are at the moment because not really supposed to know. But the, uh, there's two under-16s captains. You'll see those revealed very soon, I think, um, maybe towards the summer, but you will see that very soon. Two lads um, definitely signed. One lad that's come out and said something along the lines of he's not leaving, and that's Tahith Chong. I believe that's very, 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 very close to being done, and that's a player that we're looking after, and he's a fantastic talent. That's going to be another player that's under-16 now going into under-17, so he's got two years at under-18s level. We have got a fantastic squad already, and we're adding to this. So next year's and the year after's under-18s, because I think that would be the one where Angel Gomez is looking at being a second-year under-18. Hopefully he's not still in the under-18s by then. Hopefully he's a a regular in the under-21s and possibly even pushing for first team, but he should technically be a second-year under-18 by then. We're going to have a phenomenal squad coming through. Um, Upcoming fixtures, we've got uh, Norwich at home, on Monday for the under-21s, that's at Old Trafford. And on Thursday, we play Manchester City. I'll be there for both of those. If you're about, let me know, and we'll go and grab a Bovril. Uh, the under-18s, we've got Stoke on the 13th of Feb, and then City on the 17th of Feb. Uh, I should be at the City one. Uh, I think I think that's at home as well. Yeah, it's City at home. Uh, I should be at that one. And we will see how all that goes down. There was something else I wanted to say, and I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. <laughs> Oh, forget it. Anyway, so that's the youth review for this week. Yeah, we've we've had a, a a poor week for both the 18s and the 21s. But do you know what? It's about development, and Manchester United do it better than anybody else. Check us out next week for the under 21s and under 18s catch up because we've got some big games coming up, as I've just mentioned. Uh, and I might do them at Carrington for the under 18s game. If I'm allowed, probably not allowed to pull my camera out while I'm there. Thank you for watching. Drop us a comment what you think about what's going on at the academy. Uh, Michael Appleton's been linked with the academy director job and supposedly turned us down. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, another you know ex academy graduate coming back and managing us. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job with Oxford. Uh, what you uh, you know in terms of transfers coming in? If you've heard of any, um, let us know in the comments below. And if you've seen Rochelle and Williams, let me know what you think, because I think the kid is a real gem. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to MUFC Latest, and we'll see you soon.